Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss about optical absorption. Uh, as you know, this is one of the important phenomena as far as your optoelectronics is being concerned. The book I am following is Solid State Devices by Benji Streetman. So uh, let's start uh, optical absor uh, absorption. So what you will find that uh, when you talk about your semiconductor devices, then the main basis of operation is that the, there is creation of charge carriers in excess of thermal equilibrium values. The moment you increase the temperature of your device, what happens? There is creation of charge carriers and this leads to participation in conducting activities. So in the further things, when we move ahead, these excess carriers can be created uh, using two different phenomena. So one is optical excitation. We are putting some photons onto that sample and other is that can be done using some electron bombardment. So when this is there, uh, this phenomena has achieved, then they can be injected across uh, forward PA biased PN junction. So this will be discussed in the later part of the course. Uh, right now, just keep these things into your mind uh, that uh, initial value of the population is different. And when we excite it using some optical methods or maybe some electron bombardment method or maybe some electric field, and then this is generation and that can be used and injected across a forward biased PN junction. Now, we have this particular population being generated. So this can dominate the conduction process in the semiconductor material. So initially we don't have this population, but this population is being created. So this can readily dominate the conduction process. So it can be taken as example, you are having n number of things at the equilibrium. And when you increase the population, it becomes n plus n naught. So which is going to be more and we can expect better results. So let's start optical absorption in detail. Uh, so when we want to measure this thing, then an important technique is being used to, bend, to measure the band gap energy of a semiconductor. So this is one of the technique. If you want to measure the band gap energy of semiconductor, uh, that is the case that absorption of incident ions by the material. You fire some photons or your photons on incident onto the material. So they get absorbed. And on the basis of that, we came to know that this is going to be the band gap energy. So what is going to be in this experiment? In this experiments, photons of selected wavelengths are directed at the sample. So you're having a sample and they are being directed. And what happens? A relative transmission of the various photons is being observed. So, so many photons are there of different energies. So their transmission is actually being observed how they are actually transmitting in that particular region. Now what happens? The photons with energies greater than band gap energy are absorbed. While photons that are having energy less than band gap energy are transmitted. So this experiment gives an accurate measure of the band gap energy. So once again, I repeat, here you can see uh, I will be using uh, some different marker here. Uh, let's say um, this blue one is fine or this purple one is fine. And I'm using the pen. pen. So here you can see uh, I'm talking about this thing. I'm talking about this, that when you're having energy is greater than band gap energy, they are absorbed. And when photon energy is less than, then they are transmitted. So this gives a clear distinction between two things, uh, that what is the energy? So those greater than band gap are absorbed. And while those less than that, they will be transmitted. So the electron and hole created by this absorption process are called excess carriers. So this absorption process gives excess carriers. 
so since they are out of balance with their environment they mutually recombine so when there is a balance imbalance then they will recombine now we are having excess carriers in the respective bands conduction evident balance band so they are free to contribute to the conductivity of the material at a particular level so here you can see the experiment i am talking about it took place in three different regions so what happens when your h nu is greater than band gap energy so the energy which we are firing a photon with this particular energy h nu if this is greater than band gap it will be accomplished in three different steps step number 1 is an electron hole pair is created during the photon absorption so photon is being absorbed so ehp is being there this hole is being created and this will jump to this particular place now when your electron moves into the conduction band this is conduction band this is valence band already discussed in the previous classes so what you will observe uh, that excited electron will give uh, some energy because it is now in the in lit lattice so there are so many scattering events and in that uh, what happens it gives of energy to the lattice so this is a energy loss mechanism uh, after that what happens the electrons uh, lose the energy and the electrons recombines with the hole in the valence band so it comes back and recombine with the hole in this so this is the entire process so here you can see uh, in this particular region we don't have uh, any energy level this is band gap so this can give you some answers to your particular problem so three steps are there one is electron hole pair generation or creation when photon is being absorbed by a particular material uh, then followed by that your electron when it is in the conduction band uh, it gives some energy uh, to the lattice by scattering events and the later on the electron recombines with the hole in the valence band so this is the absorption phenomena till date next now when your energy of the photon is less than band gap uh, it is unable to excite an electron from the valence band to the conduction band uh, so this is quite clear the energy is not enough it will not go uh, suppose you want to buy something you don't have that much money you will not be able to buy that similarly uh, the photon with less energy than band gap uh, it is unable to excite an electron from the valence band to conduction band and uh, there is no state that it will remain in that region forbidden region a electron is bonded to either in valence band or it is in conduction band uh, it cannot be otherwise that it will stay inside band gap so when we talk about pure semiconductor there is negligible absorption of photons so when we talk about pure semiconductors there is negligible with photons absorption by photons and your energy h nu is greater than band gap energy so if the photon with energy this is greater than band gap less than band gap sorry then there is negligible absorption of photons this should be less than uh, this explains why some materials are transparent in certain wavelength ranges so mm, this can be seen that uh, some material behave as uh, transparent when they are being operated in certain wavelength ranges so there are certain insulators such as good nacl crystal because a large number of semiconductors behave like this so there are no energy gap large energy gap so no electron states exist in the material so that means they can be behaving as a transparent now if your band gap is above 2 electron volts only long wavelengths and the red part of the visible spectrum are transmitted so this can be seen from here this particular picture here so here you can see uh different energies are there uh, these are wavelengths so wavelength is from this side to this side energy is from this to this side so different materials are there so on the basis of that uh, you can clearly tell what is going to happen suppose your wavelength is one and your band gap is one you are talking about silicon then it is in the visible or infrared region 
similarly uh, you are looking forward uh, for some visible thing then gallium arsenide gallium phosphide cadmium silicide silicium carbide these are the various things and these are the combination of lights you are going to observe when this absorption actually took place so coming back to the absorption thing so if your band gap is about 2 electron volt as shown in the previous slide long wavelengths means infrared and the red part of the visible spectrum are transmitted on the other hand a band gap of 3 electron volt allows infrared and the entire visible spectrum to be transmitted so transmission means they are absorbing and they are behaving accordingly then coming towards this experiment so this experiment is a quite a good thing so here you can see what is actually happening in, in this particular experiment uh, here you can see you are having a monochromator uh, which filter out a particular wavelength and this is your sample this is being zoomed out like this so it is having a length l and from length l we are actually picking a very small uh, sample dx so when it is actually moving on to this sample so this is incident with energy i not and this is intensity it and here it is detector so the simple phenomena you are selecting a particular wavelength uh, that is being incident onto the sample and it is being reflected and detector is actually detecting so what is being observed this gives you the band gap knowledge and what is transmitted will give you that this is not going to be your cup of tea that means this is not the desired region what is being observed is actually giving you some information about the band gap so that's what we are talking about so let's discuss this experiment in detail now what happens if a beam of photons with energy h nu greater than eg falls on a semiconductor then what happen there will be some predictable amount of absorption determined by the properties of the material so if your photons are having a greater than energy this then there is absorption and that will tell you that this is going to be the band gap of the material and on the basis of the band gap you can clearly tell uh, what kind of material it is whether it is suitable for semiconductor purposes or not now as expected there is a some ratio uh, that you are having a incident over transmitted or otherwise transmitted over incident so ratio of incident light to the dependent on the photon wavelength and thickness of the sample so that is the numerical we are going to discuss in the coming classes so there is are the ratio ratio of incident light to depend on the photon wavelength and thickness of the sample so transmitted over incident so they are two different i not is incident and it is transmitted so that ratio is actually being dependent upon the wavelength and thickness of the sample so to calculate this dependence let's assume that the photo beam density intensity is i not photons centimeter square second is directed at the sample of thickness l so this is the intensity i have already shown in the previous slide which you are actually directing at the sample of thickness l now what happens the beam contains <coughs> only photons of wavelength l so that is actually being selected wavelength lambda sorry this is lambda wavelength lambda selected by monochromator so monochromator is there uh, it, it is actually going to select a wavelength lambda now when your beam passes through the sample it intensity at distance x from the surface can be calculated by considering the probability of absorption within an increment dx so this is your sample and its length is l and you are picking a very small region dx so in that you are actually calculating the probability of absorption distance x from the surface then now you have incident some light and your photon has actually not being absorbed or it has survived without absorption 
so we expect that there is no memory so it does not tell us how far it has traveled but its probability of absorption in any dx is constant so any region it is constant it can be observed anywhere if it falls in that particular region so there is a degradation of intensity with respect to distance dx so that is proportional to the intensity remaining at x so that can be given by this so here you can see that this is the degradation of int intensity at any moment x with the sample x and this is your uh, remaining intensity at x so uh, this is the graph you can see so here you can see uh, you are having uh, this wavelength so your wavelength is actually in this direction uh, this is typical band gap uh, this is alpha uh, and you can see here your alpha is actually absorption coefficient with the units of alpha uh, per centimeter so when you are having a intensity greater than band gap then absorption is there more so this is the important feature that if your intensity of particular wavelength is greater than band gap energy then only there will be absorption otherwise there will be no absorption so in this graph we are actually telling about dependence of optical absorption coefficient a for a semiconductor on the wavelength of incident light so in this typical plot negligible absorption beyond this and considerable absorptions above this now coming towards this particular thing which i have already discussed so what it gives band gaps of some common semiconductors relative to the optical spectrum so when you move in this direction uh, your band gap is actually increased suppose you pick silicon so its band gap is around 1.1 and if you incident a wavelength uh, then if wavelength is more than 1 then it gives you that how much is the absorption at that particular energy so you need to have photons greater than this energy so that silicon can absorb something and once it absorbs it also radiates so it's radiates that is in this particular region so when it comes back from conduction band naturally it is going to release some energy so that release uh, release of energy actually being decided by in which band gap your system is and it is actually radiating the energy so now as far as this discussion is being concerned uh, you note that semiconductor absorbs photons with energy equal to the band gap or larger they are not going to absorb the smaller energies so silicon absorbs not only band gap light less than 1 micrometer watt also shorter wavelengths including those in visible part of the spectrums so silicon actually absorbs all the things below this now coming toward this the equation which we have in the previous slide so its solution is going to be like this so here you can see uh, this is your intensity at any point x this is your incident and this is the exponential function e raised to power minus alpha ax and the intensity of transmission sample through thickness i is actually being given by this so if you want to measure intensity of light at t transmitted then this is your incident light and minus alpha l at any distance l where l is sample thickness now we talk about alpha so alpha is absorption coefficient it is having units of centimeters cent per centimeter and it actually depends upon the quality of your material which you are actually using so thank you very much uh, i hope you get a fair idea about absorption and in the coming classes we are going to discuss this in detail so the main idea about uh, this particular class is that you should know about this particular experiment that if you want to know the band gap then what you are supposed to do you are supposed to use monogrammeter so it will give you lambda particular wavelength it is incident on to the sample having thickness l so when you incident it on this then some light will be transmitted some will be absorbed so what is absorbed that is giving you the knowledge of your 
system that what is the behavior of that particular system so see you in the next class till then goodbye